Hey, welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to be playing with my brand new Shepoco 2x4 CNC machine provided by Carbide 3D. I'm going to show you how I made these real solid steel New York sewer caps. Real solid steel and these big giant brass knuckles. I used this machine as a means to an end to get to that casting, and I'm going to show you how I did it. The machine comes unassembled. And here you see what I was able to do with it. I put it on this base. In the past, I used to make these 60 inch by 24 by 36 inch high rolling tables. And it turns out it's the perfect table to put this four by two CNC machine on. And I could pass a full four by eight through and tile the file if I needed to make something larger. Lots of parts. And if you just open up everything, which is usually what I do, open up everything and take a look at it get rid of all the cardboard systematically pack the cardboard and i always put together what is obvious and then reluctantly i start to look through the book when i get stumped but i try and challenge myself i try and assemble everything without any instructions which is probably going to make my buddy kevin cringe this is a great machine because if you're new to cnc not only is it affordable but the system that they've created on the youtube channel for help and support is unmatched. Most CNC companies drop the ball when it comes to educating their users. Not Carbide 3D. Kevin and the team are constantly adding new videos to the library, new project ideas. For that reason alone, this is a tremendous value. And lots of tutorials on using Carbide Create, which is a program by which you would create your artwork and your cut paths. It can seem intimidating, but the tutorials really help you through it and they take away that fear factor. And then also, of course, Carbide Motion, which is the program used to cut stuff on the actual machine. This machine came with the VFD spindle, which is the higher powered, higher horsepower unit, and then it runs off of VFD. So you have several things to assemble to put together, which is why I use the cart. I'm going to have a water chiller, those blue lines that go to the head that water cool the spindle. There's the VFD, which runs the spindle, of course, and then, of course, the controller. And now I want to show you these cool casters that I got from a guy over at WorkbenchCon. There you see you pick up and you drop. So you pick up and they go down and then you're on the legs. And then you pick up again. It's simple as that. They self-working, self-adjusting. You just pick up and drop and pick up and put down and then you roll away. They're great. They're from SmartCaster. And I'll put the link in the description there. You can see R8 SmartCaster. And there you see the casters. As a tradition, every time I get a new CNC machine, I run my logo as the very first cut. The logo has a couple of dips and doodles in it, which makes it a good challenge for any particular bit, which is also a little bit of a tradition for me. I always run the logo first. And so there I did a V-Carve logo in uh, plywood, 11 layer plywood. It gives it that nice look. Then the next thing I did was I made a pair of giant brass knuckles, just playing around, trying to come up with some imagery, doing screen grabs off the internet. And it turns out this same week, I was going to Mississippi to my buddy Clark's casting event, and I needed something to cast. And I thought about the knuckles. I was going to bring the knuckles just as an oversized piece of art, just having fun with the big knuckles there. And this was really my first full 3D cutout. And I, I left it as an onion skin on the back, so I peel it out. And there you can see a little bit of the flashing from the onion skin. That's when you leave a real thin layer at the back instead of putting tabs in. And so really beautiful cut. Like I said, the artwork works really great. But getting back to the idea of going to this casting event, a sewer cap is something I've always wanted to make. And playing around with Carbide Create, I was able to figure out how to do a clearing path and then use a 60 degree V bit to do a V carve. And with a V carve, you're able to get sharp inside corners and, of course, sharp outside corners, which is always easy. But with this 60 degree V bit, I'm able to also create what, when you make a casting, you could also make a nice draft to pull out of the sand mold. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. So here I made my copy of a New York City sewer cap with my logo on it. And you take that and then I coated it with polyurethane. And now here I am a few days later, I'm in Mississippi at Clark's place and we spray it just to fill in some of the little tiny voids. But really kind of the spray paint works as a little bit of a glue. So the wet spray paint works to keep the graphite in place. Now we're putting graphite on it. So when we put it in the green sand, which is what we're gonna make the mold of right here, 
you put it in a flask, which is the square frame. And I'm shaking out the green sand, which is designed to stick together with moisture from water. Believe it or not, you put it in the muller, which mixes up the sand with a little bit of water. And now we're here with progressive sifting, the finest being on the face of the mold, and then the rest of it being really more of a support system than anything else. And I'm using the tamper to compact it, and Clark's giving me some instruction. I'm at Windy Hill Foundry in Mississippi. And here Clark has just giving me some instruction and he's showing me. We flip it over and now there is the CNC object that I just made in this video. And I just put the date on it. Now we're doing the other side of what would be the, the mold. And we sand it so that they don't stick together. And more green sand. It's called green sand even though it does look black. And I'm tamping it down and compacting it and making sure that it stays together. And then this is going to be a riser and a fill. That's where the fill will go. And there's a little bit more details to it, but I don't want to turn this into a video about casting because there's a lot of details which I don't know. I'm probably mislabeling certain things. But Clark is just tapping it, and he's going to pull out the mold. And there's the CNC mold from New York. And we got a perfect casting. We got really lucky because the very first one we made came out really good. The second one didn't come out as great, but you'll see that in just a couple minutes. Now there's the one that was on the CNC machine earlier in the same exact video. And there it is. And now Clark is just sh telling everybody, giving us some instructions. This Keith Rucker, world famous Keith Rucker in the background, blowing out, showing us how the flow of the hot metal is going to go. Heating up the molds really just to dry off the surface. And that's the back of the mold. And now you're going to see how they come together. And that's just drying out the moisture. The moisture is used to hold the sand together. And now the back is put on top of the face mold. And now it's time to make what's going to be used as our liquid metal. Brake discs. Clark has this machine that's designed to cut the brake discs in half so that he could put them into his forge. Here you see the brake discs slowly, very slowly, so slowly that it wasn't really able to be captured on film, so slowly that it turns to liquid. So several of those broken brake discs get dropped into the crucible deep inside. And you let it boil up a little bit. And now he pulls out the crucible and he cleans out some of the dross, which is the impurities that float to the top. And now that is the sewer cap. There's other stuff there. Keith brought a few things to mold. And there's the sewer cap getting filled. And now these are the knuckles. We were just experimenting with an open pour. And now here is the sewer cap in the bin. Just slowly cleaning it off. We should have waited overnight before we demolded it, but I was excited to see it. So now here it is the next morning. And I'm cutting off the, the risers or the vents, which are whatever you want to call them. And I had already wire wheeled the face. And here you could see it up close. And that's our finished part. Really came out nice. 25 pounds of steel. Really looked good. And now here there's me just playing around in the sand. Doing a little reveal from my Instagram post that I might have done on that. Just showing that. Really came out nice. And then later that same day we did another one. But the back of the mold fell apart as we were moving it. So here you'll see. Just pouring it into the open face. It was running late in the second day. And the next morning I was going. And so we tried to do another set of knuckles, which didn't fill in all the way. But here you see I go from art to cut to using an altogether different process to end up with a real solid steel sewer cap. I hope you learned something on this. Please check out Carbide 3D and go tell them I sent you. And there's a link in the description if you're interested in buying one. It's an affiliate link, so if you buy one, I'll get a little piece of the action. Thank you to Kevin over at Carbide 3D and thank you to Clark at Windy Hill Foundry. All the links will be in the description. Thank you guys.